In this video, I'm going to continue my Lost Art of Judo series. I will also contemplate the philosophy of the double leg takedown and delve into some of the fundamental differences between throwing techniques and shooting techniques, and how the removal of shooting techniques impacts both the grappler's overall arsenal of attacks and ability to defend. That's me taking a shot during a judo competition. Some might argue that the judo of this era was more diverse and dynamic, while voices on the other side of the controversy may defend the rule changes. As the years have passed, the number of techniques you are allowed to do in a standard judo competition have eroded more and more. Whatever side of the debate you find yourself on, it is hard to deny that in the past, judo was a grappling system that allowed a vast array of techniques that was much wider than what is seen in today's judo. So what is the impact of these rule changes? Are throws and shooting techniques really that different? Well, a throw and a double leg takedown both share the same goal of taking an opponent to the mat. Their functional approach and theoretical underpinnings have a substantially different framework. Many foot sweeps, leg trips, hip throws, and shoulder throws often rely on the same theoretical mechanism, which is waiting for or creating the right moment based on your opponent's momentum and movements to do a sudden explosive movement combined with proper timing that sends your opponent flying to the mat, sometimes with almost a beautiful dance-like elegance. A key major difference between many tripping or throwing techniques and doing shooting techniques like the single leg and double leg takedown is that shooting techniques often represent more of a forced takedown. Your opponent stands on two legs, and through a sudden forceful explosive series of movements, you try to literally remove your opponent's foundation to the ground by driving through their legs, reaping them off the mat, or by lifting your opponent clean off the mat. The kazushi, which is the balance interruption of your opponent, is buried into the shot itself by way of thrusting the momentum of your own body into the legs and hips of your opponent. You decide to take the shot, and your opponent has to defend against your aggressive attack to avoid being taken down. You can see echoes of what I'm talking about even in the terminology we use to describe the double leg, such as the nickname blast double, and even the most basic description in that we say to shoot when executing a double leg takedown because you are literally shooting your body with a sudden explosion of momentum through your opponent's legs and removing the only two attachments your opponent has to the ground, which forces them to fall. In other words, a double leg takedown is an active imposition of will. It is a form of direct offensive attack. Now, don't get me wrong, timing and leverage are also very important when shooting a single or a double leg, but more so than many other judo techniques, single and double leg takedowns represent a form of imposed will on your opponent. With the double leg takedown, you literally force your opponent to the ground in an active and direct way. It's a more active, forceful form of takedown than many throwing techniques, which sometimes require more precise timing and arguably increased waiting for the right moment to execute. I don't recall this difference between throwing techniques and shooting techniques ever being explained to me clearly when I started grappling, but I now understand that this difference is so huge that it is hard to overstate, and I have also come to appreciate how important it is for you as a grappler to have moves like the double leg in your arsenal so that you can do direct attacks more so at your own discretion with arguably less required cooperation of your opponent. Another key difference pointed out by Shintaro Higashi in a YouTube video of his is that almost all other judo techniques take place after grips have been established. But with a single or a double leg takedown, the attack can be initiated before grips have been established. It is extremely difficult to initiate most other judo techniques before grips have been established, but you can do a blast double leg takedown before your opponent has even touched you. 
Even if an opponent won't lock up with you or take grips with you, you still have the option of shooting a single or a double leg. Shooting techniques can also be very effective for attacking a stalling opponent. Knowledge of how to do a double leg takedown significantly expands your arsenal of attack as a grappler, and not training shooting techniques also significantly reduces your ability to defend against them, since learning to sprawl effectively and defend against a shooting technique is very much a learned skill that improves over time through extensive practice. By modern judokas not training both the execution and defense of shooting techniques like single and double leg takedowns and all other forms of leg grabs, it significantly reduces a judoka's ability to defend against these attacks when cross-training with a grappler from another style. This gaping hole in a judoka's game risks not only making a judoka ill-prepared to defend against leg attacks, but it also puts judo's reputation as an effective grappling discipline at risk in the greater grappling community, which might pose a risk to judo's long-term popularity and participation. How one feels about this may largely depend on what they think judo should be. Should judo be one of the most effective forms of training for stand-up gi grappling, or should it just be a sport that focuses on throwing techniques and trips regardless of whether this makes it a weaker grappling sport in totality as compared to grappling systems that allow a wider range of techniques. But that, my viewers, may be a discussion for another video. If you liked this video, please like and also subscribe so that you can see more of my content.